So just to give you a heads up, I was having a really great life as a banker. I was doing great with my salary, I was going out a lot, I mean I would go every day to either a restaurant, a pub, I would travel to Europe or even further. Yes! <laughs> that was a really good time, I remember we were always out doing crazy things, just out. I would usually go back to my house at midnight or even after midnight. This is the good things of a single life in London. You do anything at whatever time. So yeah, I mean, it was a really good life. I can still miss it today. But I don't know if you've seen this movie, Inception. Great movie. Where someone puts a seed of thought into someone else and then this seed of thought just grows and grows so much that you actually want to do it. So that's something that happened to me. So if we go back to the beginning, when I started uni, I was 18, I remember very well that we would start, they would show us the facilities, the class, the parks, the university, it was really a nice university. I forgot to add, it was actually a very posh university. I remember very well, I still had this thought that the teacher was here and he was telling us, welcome to the future CEOs. You are the next leaders of this generation. You are going to take the decisions that are going to impact our society. I don't know if you know how it feels when you're 18, <laughs> when someone tells you this. You will be like, me, I'm 18, I just don't see how I'm going to be a CEO. Don't worry, you will be one day a CEO. Yeah, that was crazy. Every teacher would tell us that, and not only in the business career, but in any other career. So at some point, it kind of grows into you. I remember we were laughing. Me and my peers, we were just like, this is so unreal. I mean, we just started to drink alcohol at the start. That's not true, we started drinking alcohol a bit earlier than 18. I, I don't know, I mean, that sounded very unreal to us. So yeah, so it was quite weird, but they did repeat it every day. So every day, we go to school, we would sit, discuss with the other students, then the teacher would come, who would go up in the stage and say, hi, hello, future leaders. And whenever someone would ask a question, I remember, he would say like, yes, what do you want to know, future leader? And I'm just like, really? I mean, it's a bit too exaggerated, I mean, at least to me. Because not only this teacher, but all the other teachers, they told us the same. You are going to found your own companies, you are going to be leading large companies, you are going to achieve so many things. That at some point, you believe in it. You really think that you are going to be like this. So you would think after four years of university that you are going to be seen as the next manager, the next leader, the next founder, CEO of the team. That's actually not the case. <laughs> That would be too good to be true. <laughs> if it wasn't for this university, I would never have thought this way. But I went to that university, they put that seed of thought in my head, and then when I left the university to start my first job as an intern, I was quite shocked. <laughs> I really thought, you know, I would be very important to the team, I would make a really good impact. People would say like, yeah, Vanessa, you're going to be our next leader, you will see, next VP, next president, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but no. Yeah, no, I was totally, totally wrong, super wrong, definitely wrong. I remember that my boss used to say to other interns, oh, please print those documents. I would just stare at him with this look, like, do not even try, do not dare asking me to print documents. No, no, no. No, <laughs> because I really thought that was a very, very low task and I was like, no, I cannot just fall that low. So he would not <laughs> ask this to me, but he would ask other things such as classifying some documents, reviewing some papers, which were anyway boring. But yeah, I still had to do it. So I mean, I did. I don't know why a lot of companies would hire highly educated students to ask them to print or to 
do a very simple task. If that's the case, then fine, just but find someone else. Don't go and recruit a highly educated person, you know? So yeah, that was, that was tough at the time. And after a few months, they actually started giving me some work, which was more interesting. Finally! So I started to do some modeling, financial models, forecast, economic models as well. Those were very interesting. And I used to work very late, up until the noon next day. I would not sleep the entire night. I know it's crazy, but I really liked it. Because I like to be challenged. I like to do things that are going to have an impact on others, that are going to help. If I can help my team, I was really interested. And if it, if it challenged me, if I'm learning something, that's even better. So I really liked it. But I remember that in that company, I was working as a financial analyst and this company did not belong to the financial sector so we were not considered as very important to the company and i really wanted to feel that importance so i decided that i would study a master for two years in finance so i went to this master uh, another story <laughs> it was really great and when i finished that master i started in an asset manager in paris again i thought now i'm going to be in a financial company working in finance from a master in finance i'm going to be important i'm going to be a future manager i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to be a vp i'm going to be doing so many things that's super interesting that are going to challenge me and very soon i discovered that was not the case <laughs> and again i was wrong very wrong again i mean maybe in the french culture you're not really relevant in the team when you're a junior i think it's not only in french culture really but in general so yeah i would not do a lot of uh, interesting things i just want to add that this asset manager would only hire students from the top notch universities i remember that i would have to read hundreds of pages of legal documentations that was really hard that was really hard I hope you don't do this. <laughs> I hope you're not a lawyer. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, the, being a lawyer is tough. It's interesting, but tough. I had some classes of law and I really found it interesting, but when I saw the amount of text that I had to read, I just said like, this is not for me. I remember as a side story that I started to be friend with a senior sales from the company. And yeah, I mean, we just had a great connection and we would talk a lot during coffee breaks and stuff. And he was really cool. For some reason, I liked his last name because his last name was very funny. So I would call him by his last name. I like to give nicknames to people. I remember that one day he calls my my team and he needed something from me so he was talking on the phone i was just answering him all the things that he needed blah, blah, blah. and when i ended up the conversation i told him like goodbye and i said his last name as a joke but I mean, we were close enough and when i did that <laughs> i remember a few days later my boss came to me and said like vanessa you are a junior you cannot call a senior by his last name do not do it again okay just let me explain here a bit. In the French culture, when you work, you have to call everyone by their first name. It might be a bit disrespectful for other cultures, but in France, if you are a colleague, you are then called by your first name. Again, I'm not important. I'm a junior. I cannot do whatever I want. So I really felt like, okay, this is not for me. I don't want this uh, authority. I want to be challenged again, and I want to be able to talk to, uh, to whoever I want, however I want as long as we are in good terms. I just thought, okay, fine, I will go to the financial capital, be exposed to a higher and broader financial sector. So I started in a large London bank. Again, I started with a lot of juniors as well. And many of those juniors, I mean, were very young. We were just like sitting there doing nothing. I mean, I remember that my boss would not give me work. I did not work for three months three months I would sit there, I would go and ask my boss, can I help you out, can I do something for you, do you want me to do some analytics, some reports, whatever, or ask your colleague and see what you can do to help them. And obviously my colleagues would not want anything from me. Uh -huh. 
So that was quite tough. It's not an environment that, that you want to be. I even I even start missing the time where, where my boss tried to ask me to do some printings. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing worse than doing nothing. Although I think that patience is quite a good quality, but I do think that people my age and even younger, we are not patient. And to be fair, I don't think it's right. But that's how we are, so yeah. The time passed by, starting to, I started to do more things, more modelings, more reports. After four years, five years, I just found that I was still not at the place I, that, that I really wanted to be. I was doing a lot of things that were very robotic. So a lot of reports, a lot of calculations, no analytics whatsoever. And it was not interesting. I was just a number out of the large bank. My work would be exactly the same every single day. I just did not feel very challenged. I remember that I worked very, very hard for a promotion. For six months I worked very hard. And after this, my boss told me like, no, I'm sorry, it's still too early to get your promotion. Great. So, I'm not very patient. I don't want my career to depend on someone else. I want to control what I am doing, where I'm going. So yeah, so I decided that I would start my own company. Yeah, and I just started, you know, with zero money. I only started with Google search and a PowerPoint. That was it. I would do a lot of research on Google to learn more about the market, learn more about my competition, look for data, economics, trends, products, whatever everything I could find, then I would summarize everything in a PowerPoint just for me to understand better what was going on. I would draw some analytics out of it and that would just convince me that this business idea was the correct thing that we should do. Strange enough, a lot of people agreed with me. It was quite easy for me to tell them like, yes, let's do this. And, and after a few months of me reser researching it, I started to network. In London, there are many startup networks. I'm sure wherever you are, there must be a lot of startup networking events. So I went there, I talked to a lot of people, met a lot of people as well, and I liked it. And that, that's how I met my two partners. I met my two business partners there. We discussed, we agreed, and we just decided to found the company. And the day we founded the company, I left the bank. And there is no regrets. I like what I do because I am in, I'm having a bigger impact on other people, on the economy, on the society where we are working right now. We are doing a lot of things to help them. And I think that's what I really like about it. I mean, we are helping others and I am having an impact. And I'm doing many different things every day. It could be either researching, doing some legal stuff, developing, um, talking to my team. That's what interests me a lot. Like doing so many different things that keeps me happy and busy. So that's how a banker started her own campaign. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a thumb up to this publication and join the channel if you haven't done already. See you for the next video. Bye bye.